Hey everybody, I'm Bucky Batch at W, and today I'm going to be recapping the Seattle Seahawks NFL Draft 2020. I'm going to be giving it grades, and I don't think that I can do a better job than John Schneider. I don't know, I'm probably going to look back at this video in a couple of years and look back at how stupid I was, but I'm just going to be critiquing what what the Seahawks did and going to be a pretty tough grade. So their first round pick was the first time that the Seahawks have used their own first round pick since like 2011, which is pretty crazy. Pick 27, the Seattle Seahawks selected Jordan Brooks, linebacker out of Texas Tech. And I like this pick more than most people. They definitely needed an edge rusher. Um, that was the number one concern. People will say, oh, there's, there's Bobby Wagner. But Jordan Brooks, there are ways that you can play um, two inside linebackers on the field at the same time, even even if it's not our scheme. But um, so anyway, he is a he's a very good run stuffer, and sometimes you're gonna need that against teams like you know the Forty Niners, against teams like the Rams, against the Cardinals, all in our own division. That's gonna be it's gonna be very useful to have a guy like Jordan Brooks who can who can stop the run. I think it's it's a good pick. I would have probably gotten AJ Epinesa over him, which is why I'm giving it a B. There were bigger and better needs, but I don't think that this was really a bad reach. So maybe he's not going to be the, the best guy in coverage, but there are other very good linebackers in the NFL who aren't great at coverage. You're just going to have to you know figure out how to use him. You're going to have to blitz him a lot, and he's going to have to play the run a lot and rush the passer a lot, but that's okay. Here's where, after the first pick, the draft kind of starts to fall apart. With pick 48, which the Seahawks traded up to get, they traded 59 and pick 101 to trade up to pick 48. They select Daryl Taylor, edge out of Tennessee. And I give this a D plus. It could have been a lot lower, um, but I, I, I kind of like Daryl Taylor, the player. He, he's good in coverage. He's a, he's a good pass rusher. He's not, he's not great at, at anything, I really think. You took him over A.J. Epinesa. You took him over Zach Bond. You took him over Julian Aquara. You took him over Curtis Weaver. You took a lot of guys over Curtis Weaver when the fifth or sixth round to the Dolphins. Took him over Bradley and I. There's just, there's so many better edge selections that I would have gone with. And not only that, but they traded pick 59 and pick 101 to get him. I firmly believe you would have been able to get him with pick 59. You maybe would have been able to get him with pick 101. So I don't, the, the trade up was completely unjustified. Uh, you kind of screwed yourself out of another selection. I just don't like the pick. You address a need and edge, which is why it's a D plus and not like an F. Um... But he definitely wasn't the best edge rusher available. He wasn't the fifth best edge rusher available. And then you trade it up to get him. And then they traded back from with the last pick in the second round, pick 64. They traded that back for pick 69 and pick 148. This was their best pick of the draft because, I mean, I, I'm taking into account the trade that they made. They they made a good trade um, in trading back. They were able to get Damian Lewis still giving the Damian Lewis pick an A-. minus. It wasn't great value, but it was pretty good value. First thing I did with Damian Lewis was I watched the Alabama game, and he is just throwing like Raekwon Davis on the ground. And there's a quote from him from the NFL Combine, which is, I enjoy slamming people on the ground, which I, I love in an offensive guard. Released DJ Fluker, so I think he's probably going to be starting at right guard in a phone booth. He can absolutely throw people. You don't really want him out on the move, but... You know, you're going to have to live with that, I, I think. So, I think it was a very, very good pick by the Seahawks to get Damian Lewis A-. minus. And then we got to day three, and it all fell apart. Normally, the Seahawks have a good day one and day two. They have, you know, maybe a pick that I like, and I don't really like the rest of them, but then on day three... They redeemed themselves. That was not the case this year. In fact, they had a pretty terrible day three. With pick 133, the Seattle Seahawks selected Colby Parkinson, tight end out of Stanford. I don't hate the value of Colby Parkinson in the fourth round. He's more of a fifth or sixth round player to me. But what I do hate is that he's going to be this year behind. Who He's going to be behind Greg Olson. He is going to be behind Will Disley. He's going to be behind Jacob Hollister, probably. At best, he's, he's the third tight end on the depth chart. Like, Parkinson's game is he could be a red zone threat. 
Well, I just said Will Dis how good Will Disley was in was in the red zone last year. Day three, maybe you don't have to get starters. But for the Seahawks team, with how many holes they had, they definitely could have been getting impact players on day three. On, on defense, on the offensive line, there were definitely still guys to be had. And Colby Parkinson just doesn't make any sense to me. Later in the fourth round, pick 144, they take DJ Dallas running back out of Miami. F. First of all, he is at best going to be the third running back on the depth chart. Probably going to be the fourth. He's going to be behind Chris Carson. He's going to be behind Rashad Penny. He is going to be behind Travis Homer, probably. If Carson and Penny get injured again, then maybe he's the number two running back. But even then, they'll probably bring in someone like Marshawn Lynch, like they did last year. Probably isn't going to get 20 touches this year. And you're drafting him in the fourth round. He could have been an undrafted free agent that you signed. You could have easily drafted him in the, in the seventh round with pick 251 that you traded for. We'll get to that later. But you could have easily drafted him there. Um, there were much, like the Cardinals got a better, even receiving back in Egypt, in Eno Benjamin that they got in the seventh round. At this point, you could have gotten Tyler Johnson. You could have gotten Quintez Cephas. They could have easily been your third wide receiver. A third wide receiver is much more valuable than at best a fourth running back. It is just puzzling. It's just an F. And pick 148. They got this in the trade back. And they got Damian Lewis. I knew that they were going to need another edge rusher. And Bradley and I and Curtis Weaver are still on the board. Kind of annoys me when every year they just, they seem to, in the later rounds, default to people from the Pac-12 or the Mountain West. Now I actually wanted them to do that because Bradley and I and Curtis Weaver was still on the board. Two guys that very well could have gone in the first round. And they take Alton Robinson out of Syracuse. Are you kidding me? Now this is a C. I could have made it a C minus, but they needed an edge rusher. Alden Robinson doesn't suck. But is he going to be ahead of Rasheem Green? Is he going to be ahead of LJ Collier on the depth chart? I don't think so. He's not going to be ahead of Jadavion Clowney or Everson Griffin if they sign one of those guys. He's not going to be ahead of Daryl Taylor. You know, that they're they're going to take this this depth guy when you could have taken Bradley and I, who had a who had a chance to be to be a starter there. It just annoys me that they would. They would go Alden Robinson here. Then with pick 214, they select Freddie Swain, wide receiver, Florida. And I'm giving this a C minus. Originally, I gave it a D minus. I moved it up because I, he's a good guy in the, in the screen game. And if you don't think that Metcalf and Lockett are that, then Freddie Swain's going to be that guy. You needed to draft a third receiver. For some reason, you didn't draft one before this. You could have grabbed Quintus Cephas before. And you could have got you could have grabbed Tyler Johnson before. You could have grabbed um, Juwan Jennings before, or you could have gotten you could have gotten Juwan Jennings here. I think you could have gotten Antonio Gandy Golden here. There was a lot of guys on day three who were just sitting there and they were perfect value. And then you took Freddie Swain, who was the third best receiver on his own team. He was not he was not Van Jefferson. He wasn't Tyree Cleveland. So he was the third best receiver on his own team. He's probably going to be a a solid situational receiver. It's just the the value at wide receiver was so much better earlier, and you just neglected to take it, and you ended up going Freddie Swain, so C-. minus. And they trade back into the draft in the seventh round to pick 251 to select Stephen Sullivan, tight end out of the LSU. F. And they traded a 2021 sixth rounder to get Stephen Sullivan, who's probably not going to make the team. You know why he's not going to make the team? Because at LSU... He had 2% of their receiving yards and 2% of their catches. That's not an NFL player. I'm sorry. He wasn't starting. He was behind Thaddeus Moss, who went undrafted. Oh, I get he had to compete with Justin Jefferson and Terrace Marshall, and obviously Jamar Chase, Clyde edwards Elair. You have to get more than 2% of the receiving yards and, re- and catches. And he had, like, he had like 120 yards last year. That's not an NFL player. And you already took a tight end. He's not going to play at all. Um, he's, there's just no reason for him to be here. You know, maybe, maybe you think, oh, he's, he's going to be able to run past people uh, as, as, a, as a big tight end and he's speedy. He's going to be able to run past linebackers. Well, then teams aren't going to be putting linebackers on him. They're going to put safeties on him. 
Um, there's just, there's, I mean, if he didn't produce at college, he's not going to produce in the NFL. I don't care how many gimmicky ways you use him. This is, this was just a terrible pick. And to trade back into the first round to get, to trade back into the draft to get him with a 2021 six rounder, it's just stupid. It is just stupid, is all I have to say. It is, it is the stupidest move I have ever seen. And... It's just, it's clearly an F. If I could give it an F minus, I would, but I'm not, I'm not going to do it. It's an F. Okay, so now on a lighter note, um, the Seahawks have three UDFAs that I want to talk about. They signed around like 15. Uh, but there's three that I want to talk about. Two, because I think they're going to make the team uh, maybe make impacts. And one, because um, he is, he's the half-brother of Dalvin Cook. His name's Anthony Jones, running back out of Florida international and he survived a drive-by shooting and i just think that's it's awesome that now he's in the nba or nfl after surviving a drive-by shooting and you know i just i I just want to give a shout out to him he's awesome and so now we'll start with aaron fuller wide receiver out of washington and he's going to find playing time i think i think he's a better pickup than freddie swain i think that he's going to be that fourth wide receiver behind Lockett, Metcalf, and Philip Dorsett, and I think he's definitely be going to be getting some playing time. Um, and you know, I've, as I was watching his his tape, he's he, he has awesome hands. He is a he's a very good wide receiver. He was one of the reasons that Jacob Eason was so good at Washington. So I'm pretty surprised that he didn't get picked, and the Seahawks picked him up. That that was an awesome pickup by the Seahawks. Now, Anthony Gordon, quarterback out of Washington State, and this was definitely an awesome pickup because there, because he could have gotten the fourth round, and he threw for 48 touchdowns, I believe, almost 5,500 yards. Um, Seahawks fans who live in Washington probably know that better than me. Um, but, you know, I was also breaking down his tape. He is going to be an awesome backup quarterback, and they need to keep him around because I think right now their backup's Geno Smith. And, I mean, hopefully Anthony Gordon doesn't make an impact. You know, if Anthony Gordon's not on the field, then that doesn't mean that anything good has happened. That means that Russell Wilson's out of the game. But, no, and Anthony Gordon, I, I love the pickup. If there ever comes a situation where the Seahawks are in need, Anthony Gordon can carry them. Not carry them, but he can bring them through a game pretty well, I think. So that's all I have for you today. Sorry about the background noise. The people in my house are kind of relentless. But um, that was the Seahawks draft grades. Uh, I hope you enjoyed the video. You know, if, you, if you really like the Seahawks draft, which I don't know many people that do, but if you really liked it, then you know get into an argument in the comments. I would love to get into an argument with you. Um, like the video, subscribe, I guess. Um, and, you know, like I said, we'll do this for probably other teams. Uh, we'll see. And until next time, I'm Bucky Badger W saying peace out.